So welcome guys, welcome to this uh, topper session. I'm here with Dr. Rajat Vashne from the state of uh, UP. And uh, it gives me great, great privilege to uh, introduce him to you guys and welcome to him to the show. So Dr. Rajat is from uh, basically from UP. He, is, he did both his undergraduate as well as his post graduation from the prestigious UCMS Medical College in Delhi. So he is 2013 batch for MBBS and 2019 batch for PJ. So that again continues with the trend. So all of our toppers belong to the same batch. So 2013 and 2019. So again, if you want to get into uh, DM, the best is uh, to get it get to get in through the first chance itself. So again, uh, welcome, Dr. Rajat. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, sir. So Rajat, the standard question which I ask everyone, why did you choose cardiology? So there are a lot of subjects in your MD days. So what attracted to, for, to you towards cardiology? Because again, this is an exam where you, it's not like neat where you go write the exam and then choose your specialty. For this, you have to pick your specialty first, study and then go write the exam. So what made you choose cardiology? So there were many reasons for choosing the cardiology. I was uh, interested in the cardiology uh, from around my second year of the, my MD. And uh, in my MD days, I saw the instant satisfaction that I used to get by treating the patient of the cardiology, the instant relief the patient used to get uh, in cardiology that I couldn't find in other branches. And also I wanted to do my DM in some branch, which is some emergency uh, because I was very interested in emergency medicine. So I chose cardiology. So were you particularly impressed by the by your cardiology posting? Were you particularly like some professor uh, like impressed you with his teaching skills, something like that? Usually you have somebody like that. Now you are impressed with a certain cardiologist or if you choose neurologist, certain neurologist. Was there any particular person or you had in mind? So actually when in my uh, UCMS days, when I was posted in my CCU, there used to be CCU postings and we used to get posted there. And when I used to get, uh, when I used to see all the cardio patients and I have done uh, various thrombolysis uh, of the patients. Uh, so there was a um, instant uh, well, the gratification, the satisfaction that I used to get uh, exactly. that attracted me towards cardiology. Sir. I think uh, that is one thing which is very, just particularly strong for cardiology is that it is a semi-surgical field. It's not only, yes. although it comes under subspecialty of medicine, it actually is a semi-surgical field. So you require both the uh, knowledge of the internist as well as some some sort of surgical skill is also required and i think many of us take cardiology just because of this fact that again there you, you can immediately change or put a patient's life or potential for saving life with uh, immediate therapy is very prominent in cardiology so Rajat, how did you approach uh, preparation for your ins there should be some strategy because you know there is an exam which is neat assess which is primarily medicine based there's an exam which is INISS, which is primarily subspecialty based. So how did you approach this? What was your strategy and did you focus on one exam more than the other? Uh, sir, actually, I started my preparation uh, after completing my MD in the April of this year. And after completing my MD, I started preparing for the need to SS examination. Uh, sir, it was in my mind that I have to give INISS exam in respect of my uh, rank in the NEET examinations. So during the days of prepare, preparing for the NEET SS, I used to see the videos of uh, uh, general medicine by the Rakesh Nair sirs. And for the cardio part, I used to see your videos. So by the time NEET happened in September of this year, I had completed more than half of the video of cardiology. And I had made notes of those videos. And after the NEET, I completed the remaining section of the cardio uh, from your videos and made the notes and uh, did revision again and again. So that was my strategy. So, uh, Dr. Rajat, did you watch the videos in the uh, normal 1x speed or did you, for ease of time, watch it at 1.5x so some of our candidates do so? Uh, no, sir. I watched it on 1x only because there was a lot of content and there was a lot of new content which I read for the first time uh, in, through the videos. Uh, so, I had to watch it on 1x only and I, because I also had to make notes. So, it was very difficult to watch it at 1.2 yeah. or 1.5x. See, I find it very difficult to understand how certain candidates watch it at 1.5x. So for me, it's very difficult even if I were to view my own videos at 1.5x to follow. But some people do it and it works for them. But again, I find it very difficult to understand. So you were able to finish the entire uh, videos and your estimate was around probably one month duration was required. And you could prepare notes at that time. So what did you feel about the videos? How was the quality of videos? Were the videos too exhaustive or was it an adequate length? Did it cover all the topics? 
So how was so the I video? video I think videos covered all the topics because when I was uh, giving my examination of uh, INISS, I could relate it to all the videos. I, there was there were many tricky questions, but I could always uh, you know relate it to some of the videos of your some of my notes. So I think it was adequate. Yeah, adequate. So uh, did it actually make you interested to learn more on cardiology? Because again, there's no point in keeping. Yeah, there's no point in me telling coming and teaching you everything if it's not interesting for you. I should be able to inter- right. keep you interested and engage the audience. Yes, sir. The way you taught the cardiology subject and with the historical facts and all that, which used to, you know, create more and more interest. So it was fun to watch the videos. So, any particular topic you liked in the videos, and what topics do you think are gen- which they generally ask in the exams? Are any particular topic which they specially focus on the exams? Yeah, and congenital people. heart disease uh, was one of the topic uh, which uh, we had never read uh, thoroughly uh, during our MD days, and it was one of the topics which my seniors used to say that it is uh, you know very frequent. Uh, large number Brand of patients come from the congenital heart disease. Yes, sir. So I think uh, which was uh, the topic was very in, uh, taught by you in a very interesting way, and uh, I could cover all the important uh, topics from that. Topics. So uh, did you read? Did you read Bronwald? Your standard cardiology uh-huh. textbook, did you Bronwald Hurst? So did you? No, no sir, I didn't did read, read any, any of the yeah. books, sir. Some of my seniors used did to you? say that you have to read yeah. Bronwald or you have to read Park for congenital uh, heart disease. So you did not but read Bronwald or Park. So I think no, since I since not. our app has come in, your app based coaching has come in. As I always say, your the amount of time you require to learn has shortened dramatically. Because again, reading Bronwald is a six month to one year venture. It's not something you can take lightly. So that you sit and then start reading cover to cover. It's a very difficult book to read, especially if you are not a cardiologist. So it's written from a DM yes, point of view. So again, where once we have a marrow-based videos, when you have this app-based preparation, and actually somebody teaches you, it, the ease of, it becomes learning a cardiology for the INSS point of view becomes far easier. And again, it makes it more interesting, actually. So we have a certain target. So if it's 80 hours, it doesn't extend beyond 80 hours. It doesn't go to 81 hours. So you have a particular target. So you can take any subject. For example, if you take something like uh, atrial septal defect, it might be a one hour or two, one hour or one hour for a video. So that's the end yes. of atrial septal defect. But it's not. But if you take something like Pearl off, there is more than hundred pages of atrial septal defect. So it's very difficult for you to know what to concentrate on. So I think learning in an app-based way with this with marrow videos helps you a lot in that particular respect. So yes, uh, how many questions? Pre- yeah. I yes. had the PDF of uh, Brownwald. I I looked at it for once only, but then I realized that I could not complete it in the required amount of time, and I relied on the videos only. So. Exactly. See, that is what I always uh, see. Some of the candidates they come and ask me, sir, I have read Brownwald three times. I have read uh, Harrison. I have read uh, seen all your videos, seen Rakesh's videos, attempted all the questions, and yet I cannot get in. So this is what I have to say. That some there is uh, learning too much is also bad. So you yes, should sir. be able to compress all you know and uh, be thorough in that. You cannot grab onto st- everything and hope everything sticks. My strategy yeah, was to uh, revise at least two to three times uh, the thing that I have learned. So it was not uh, that I have to cover all the topics, but I know that I have to cover the limited amount of topics and I have to revise them so that I can consolidate uh, all those topics. Exactly. So what is stress is basically smart study. So rather than uh, you following a burn everything approach to so cover the entire textbook, it is basically selected topics, high yield topics, focused, smart study with adequate revision. I think that is a key concept which has to be followed with uh, INS. Of course, it varies from individual to individual. It is essential to remember that there is more than one approach. So there you can still read Brownwald and get in. There's, I'm not saying don't do that, but there is is essential to understand there is more than one approach. What I am saying is this is probably the easiest approach. So you can re- can take the longer route of reading all the textbooks or this is a far easier approach. So again, this depends on your perspective. Uh, so again, how many questions were you able to attempt in the INSS? So I only left two questions, sir. I okay, 78 questions. 70... Yes, sir. So again, as I, I repeatedly say... All the questions of cardiology, but the, the two questions that I left were from the medicine side only. But, so as I repeatedly say, please, please attempt you know, at least 95% of questions. Okay, do not leave behind questions unnecessarily. Try to attempt at least 95% of questions. 
look at all our topper interviews look at all the other subjects topper interviews they would have attempted around that number there is uh, so try to guess correctly try to get into the mind of the examiner and try to probably guess out the answer so what how was the mcq preparation did you read mcq books or were you able to see the marrow mcq bank what how was the mcq preparation Uh, so i didn't prepare too much on the mcq side i used to revise again and again the notes and uh, for the mcq part i had given the mock test that used to come on the marrow uh, so that so was what my was your rank preparation the, what uh, was your rank in the mock test uh, sir it was around in the top 10 only sir so there if you observe there is a free video on youtube which states on how to observe uh, how to uh, approach mcqs for your exams so please do have a look and then we have gone over like in questions which you have very it's very difficult to uh, know the answer how to guess out the answer so uh, rather how was your interview did they ask any particular questions in the interview uh, which were of a very high standard was there any particular way for preparing for the interview and uh, what were the aspects which they concentrated in the interview session uh, sir for the interview part uh, there was uh, many of the random questions which were from all the topics uh, that you covered in the theory part and so i just prepared uh, from the uh, notes that i had and uh, they asked many of the clinical questions in the interview uh, and a few of the thesis questions and one or two of the stats questions so that was it so i think uh, we had a mock session so i think it was around 10 to 20 minutes in which i said like two things one you can only focus only on the thesis two don't bother about the questions because they are mostly as random questions you cannot predict for it is not of much use studying and preparing for the interview so i think that was my message and i think most students who followed who written the inss and attend and uh, attended the interview have come up with the same follow but practically i don't think there is any particular point in studying for the interview for you concentrated on cardiology so how was the uh, how do, was your medicine preparation because you know there is two different exams right now so inss the medicine for you have to follow the cardiology or sub specialty and then you have neat tests which follows the medicine part so again candidates again have, uh, are are they can you actually study for both or do you have to focus on either inss or neat so i think uh, for majority of the questions in ini are from the specialty part so i cannot focus on the two of the uh, subjects and uh, from for the medicine and for the cardiology both but i was very fortunate that i had prepared for my neat part so in the neat ss there was a syllabus of uh, whole whole of the medicine so i had prepared uh, then Uh, so I, i could recall the questions of uh, medicine from my neat preparation sir my question is actually is it possible to prepare both for neat ss and for inss so because again both uh, yes, follow sir. different syllabus it is possible uh, yes sir it is totally so, possible because i had done it, it so it was possible sir. yeah exactly again i think uh, it is very very important you should not let any exam go to waste so inss gives you a lot of seats in premier institutes again please don't skip that studying in a premier institute offer op- opens the doors for a lot opens a lot of doors for your career so a lot of fellowships you can get a lot of fellowships just because you study in a premier institute where you have access to access as well as you can publish a lot of things so yes, please don't neglect inss and please don't neglect neat ss because again again the vast majority of seats are in neat ss so it is possible to study both so i think uh, you should concentrate on your doing your md very well because your neat ss is primarily an md based syllabus and then i think uh, as for my discussion with most toppers around 1 to 2 months of focused inss preparation is enough so i think you would agree that around 1 to 2 months is enough right for the from uh, yes sir i started uh, preparing for ini after my neat only sir exactly so all of the in toppers which i have discussed most of them have prepared around in 1 to 2 months and i think this should be a good advice to the juniors that i think around 1 to 2 months of focused inss preparation is enough so please take that into consideration please prepare for both okay neat because you have the largest amount of seats and inss because you have your premier institutes so rajat uh, what was your opinion on your on the marrow app was there, do you have any suggestions for improvement or do you feel that any particular area needs to be focused on more and uh, any suggestions I- from yeah the whole of the experience of uh, maru was uh, great sir i can uh, use the maru videos from uh, any time anywhere and i could make all the notes sir and all the topics were covered sir i could feel that there were a bit uh, eco was not taught and 
so i could feel ki uh, there can be some videos on echo and some of the yeah, that's uh, those see echo and angiogram are something which i deliberately did not take because again there is no end to taking it because if i start taking echo it it consumes 30 to 40 hours and there's no end to taking it so we have requ- we have got a lot of requests not from the or md's guys from those who are practicing dm please these your seniors who have gone for dm first to take echo videos i said it is difficult because that doesn't serve your purpose see when you have 80 videos you these are high yield essential topics so if you are take an echo video you may get one or two questions and for that you will be studying 20 to 30 hours that's why i felt that the um, there is the yield which you get for studying such an enormous topic uh, i think uh, it is not worth it i always focus on the pareto principle na 80 20 rule so 20 80 percent of the best questions comes from 20 percent of the topics so it's not possible to take all it if you look at even the toppers i think uh, the toppers has scored around 50 out of 80 questions and uh, 22nd rank which is the last person who's qualified has scored 40 out of 80 so there is room for leaving a lot of questions people have to know that you can still get a lot of questions wrong there is no point in studying everything under the sun so i think that is uh, very important to know so uh, dr rajat it's a pleasure talking to you before we leave i would just like to know do you have any your second rank so you can take your pick of the colleges so do you have any particular college in mind which you would like to study in uh, sir uh, it was always in my mind to study either in the pgi chandigarh or in aims delhi because i always wanted to study in a central institute uh, so currently sir at my rank 2 i am a bit inclined towards the pgi chandigarh again an excellent uh, choice one of the premier institutes in the country again it's a luxury you know, to be confused between aims and pj not many people get it so i hope that uh, you know that um, uh, again again you are obviously going to get the seat so i hope you have a very fruitful career in cardiology so you are so you are stepping into a entirely new field so i hope you have a very fruitful career in cardiology and uh, you know as part of the cardiology fraternity as you are entering it so let me welcome you to this field and uh, I hope we meet in some conference and all the best for your future. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir.